And now it's time for the children's story. So as the young people come forward, they're going to be collecting the uh, uh, children's offering. And it goes to support uh, our youth ministries, uh, Sabbath school, supplies, and anything else that the young people can be doing. Deb Store Camp has got the children's story today. See this? This is Mount Everest. Look, what do you see on it? Snow. Lots of snow. <laughs> because it's one of the highest mountains, it is the, considered the highest mountain in the world, a lot of people have an aspiration to climb this mountain. It's considered one of the most wonderful goals a person could achieve because it's cold. In fact, it's so cold it gets down to negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit, Celsius, I'm sorry up there. That's cold, Gilbert. That's really cold. It's not Florida weather. <laughs> and the winds can get so strong there, they can get up to 200 miles an hour. Wow. Can you imagine camping or tenting in that? These people who hike it are in tents. So I got an image of somebody hiking it. This is how dangerous it is. You look at them climbing almost a vertical cliff to get up on top of this mountain. It can take up to two months for people to climb this. Our story today is about a specific team. Um, it's with a group, uh, a gentleman, his name was, uh, i got to look it up here because I can't remember all my names, Miles Osborne. And this was in 2006. It was 7 a.m. in the morning and his team had been hiking for seven hours. They had been on the mountain for three months, they had tried to summit the mountain three times, but they kept getting pushed back because of weather. So this was their third attempt to make the summit. And they thought, well, we've got good weather, we're going to go while we can. So they started hiking in the middle of the evening. And it was now 7 in the morning, and as they were 30 minutes from the summit, Miles saw something green flapping in the snow. And he thought it was maybe somebody's tent that got left behind. But as they got closer, they saw it was a man. And the man had no gloves on. In that kind of weather, do you think gloves would be important? Yeah. He had no hat on. And he was starting to take off his clothes. It was a little bit shocking for Miles and his team to see.
see that because it was cold there and he should be keeping his hat and his gloves on. And the first thing the man said to them was, I bet you're surprised to see me here. It was the only moment of clarity that this man had when they, after they found him. He had been left for dead the night before by two men, uh, they're called Sherpas, that help people up and down the mountain. They thought he had died, so they left him there after much debate, and Miles and his team came upon him, and he wasn't dead, was he? <laughs> so, Miles and his team had a real difficult decision to make. Do you know it costs a lot of money to make this hike? Do you know how much money? $60,000. You're close. <laughs> it can take anywhere from $25,000 to $40,000, depending on what what kind of a team you have and what kind of equipment you take with you to make it safe or a little less safe. So it's a lot of money. And not only that, it takes a lot of training to uh, work up to a hike like this. You and I couldn't just make this hike tomorrow. So his team had a real bad decision that they didn't really want to be making. They had to decide, do we help this man down the mountain or do we climb it? We got, we're about 30 minutes away. Of the team, four of them had already been to the top. Two had not. Uh, on a previous trip, the four had made it. So they talked about, well, what if you two go up, we wait for you, and you come back down. But they weren't sure that that was a safe thing to do to only send two. Does this sound like an easy decision for you and I? You know, to, to decide this man needs some medical help, we should just help him down, right? But it wasn't an easy decision because they had put so much time and money into it. And it's not easy for a lot of people because just the week before, another man, um, David Sharp, had been also in the same predicament where his health was not good. And 40 people passed by him. And not one person stopped to help him. So here, that man passed away. This team knew about that. And they had the same decision they were faced with. What does the Bible tell us about this? Does the Bible have anything to say about this situation? Not only does it have something to say, it even gives us a story very similar in some regards. I'm going to go uh, to uh, Luke 10, verse 30, and read a little bit to you. You tell me if the story sounds familiar to you. It says, Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Not a whole lot of similarities in our story yet, right? Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So that's where our story takes on the similarity. So you got an injured person, and people could pass by. In fact, as this team was sitting there trying to make this decision, two hikers came along, and they tried to flag them down to see if they would also help, but they pretended that they didn't speak English, and they continued on. I'm going to read another verse to you, uh, Matthew 25:39. says, And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. So Jesus has a command for us here, doesn't he? That if we treat others um, the way we would want to be treated, uh, we're actually treating or, or taking care of Jesus. So here was this man on the side of the mountain who needed help. And what is Jesus' command to us? To treat him and to help him, right? Well, Miles did that, even at the cost of him making it all the way to the top of Mount Everest. They helped this man down who was getting to a point where he was fighting them and combative, and it was dangerous to bring him down the mountain. So it was almost at the cost of their own lives that they helped him down, and it was a hard descent, but they got him down, and he lived. They never made it to Mount Everest, or at the top, 
those two gentlemen. But they did save a man, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus wants us to remember. When we're helping people, we're actually helping Jesus. Amen. Amen. Does somebody want to pray for us? Dear Jesus, thank you that we can be here and listen to the story. And please help us, even though we can't, we probably won't have as big of a decision as that we may. Um, please help us to choose the right way. Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you.